Wait, you're telling me there's a Star Trek spinoff about a hospital? I'm an historian, not a doctor. Well, I guess I'm a little bit of both today in this episode of Lost Trek. Greetings at Komomai and Nuhneh, everybody. I'm Captain Kanaka, the Trek historian. Welcome to Lost Trek, a special historical research series where we study the proposed Star Trek TV shows, movies, and episodes that were proposed for production but never found their way to general audiences. As always, if you have a project you'd like me to investigate, let me know in the comments below. In this episode, we're going to trade our phasers for hypo sprays as we beam aboard the USS Hope for one of the earliest proposed Trek spin-offs ever made called Hope Ship. Well, I'll give him this. It doesn't lie about what it is. So let me set the incursion drive for the early years of the Star Trek universe. Engage. So here we are again back in the psychedelic 60s and it's the second season of Star Trek the original series. As I pointed out in my study of the James Bond meets Star Trek spin-off 7, link in the description below, all is not well in the 23rd century. Towards the end of the second season, Star Trek creator and showrunner Gene Roddenberry sought new ways to keep his vision alive as obstacles flanked him on every corner. NBC executives wanted Star Trek to do more with less resources, and this time, calling on the help of Isaac Asimov, Harlan Ellison, and Ray Bradbury wouldn't cut it. So now Roddenberry had to develop an even riskier set of strategies, the most risky of which was hands down a letter writing campaign between superfans Bijo and John John Trimble, orchestrated by Roddenberry. That decision on its own could have fired Roddenberry outright from the show. Even while this strategy would pay dividends later on, Roddenberry also took a more conservative approach in developing two possible spin-offs one of which I've already reviewed. While Seven, Gene Roddenberry's sci-fi spy thriller, actually spawned a backdoor pilot at the end of the second season entitled Assignment Earth, there are hidden clues in season two for a second spinoff and an even more hidden backdoor pilot. Hope Ship, Gene Roddenberry's second proposed spinoff, co-written by Darlene Hartman, traces its origins back to the famous second season episode, A Private Little War. You know, the one where stuff like this happens. That's the one. But in all seriousness, this hidden pilot serves as the best glimpse of what Hope Ship would look like as a show. The spin-off would focus on the USS Hope, a medical ship. Its main protagonist would be First Officer Simon Mbenga, brother of Dr. Mbenga, who helps heal Mr. Spock during a private little war with many cutting-edge therapies, including... Okay, okay. In the good doctor's defense, Vulcans do have different physiology than humans. Their hearts are where their livers should be, for goodness sake. What we just saw does qualify as therapy. But I digress. Much like with Seven, Roddenberry and his collaborators tried to transplant Star Trek-style storytelling to another genre of American television. Whereas Seven borrowed from spy thrillers like Get Smart and Mission Impossible, Hope Ship would borrow its ideas from... General Hospital. Oh boy. In Roddenberry's defense, hospital dramas were much like westerns and spy thrillers as being extremely popular forms of television in the late 1960s. If it were greenlit, Hope Ship would tend to the galaxy's needy and wounded, while maybe cultivating some romance along the way. Except, that didn't happen. And this is why. For starters, Roddenberry devoted most of his time into developing Assignment Earth as the proper spin-off. Secondly, Roddenberry's risky gambit with B. Joe and John Trimble worked, and Star Trek was given an extra but ultimately limited season. But what if this show were greenlit? Well, calibrate your transporters because we're gonna go across the multiverse. 
Let me aim my transporter beam for the right ion storm. Here we go, and... Captain Kanaka, the Trek historian, gives Hope Ship one season or less, and here's why. One detail I cut out of my analysis of Seven for time was the fact that setting a Star Trek spinoff in contemporary times would significantly cut the overhead. There would be no models, no major special effects shots outside the transporter, and no aliens or no other alien worlds to render. This lower price tag would be enough to justify renewing Seven for a second season. With Hope Ship, you have the same production costs as the original Star Trek series at a time when funding for such shows was shrinking instead of expanding. Case in point, season 3 of the original series. The cuts were so significant that co-producer Bob Justman compared the budget of that season to, quote, a really good radio show, with new models and potentially new alien species needing to be developed for the new show, the practical logistics of a Hope Ship spin-off would be increasingly prohibitive. Equally as important would be the potential audience reaction to this kind of project. One of the signature qualities of the Star Trek universe is the storytelling and the endearing characters. Strictly following General Hospital's soap opera meets a hospital format could risk alienating the Star Trek fan base. Case in point, these people tuned in for Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, and Dr. McCoy, and Hope Ship would deliver Dr. McDreamy. There we go. As a result, this reaction could erode Star Trek's consistent but comparatively low ratings, resulting in its cancellation, just like the original Star Trek series was almost canceled after the first season. From my perspective, the only way to maintain the Star Trek fan base and potentially grow it through Hope Ship would require making Star Trek less like General Hospital and more like MASH. Based on the 1968 Richard Hooker novel and the 1970 Robert Altman film of the same name, MASH tells the story of a mobile army surgical hospital near the front lines of the Korean War. The show's 11 season arc commented on many social issues that still bother us today like war, racism, faith, and many others with compelling characters each finding humanity in the worst situations possible. Judging that Private Little War is basically a backdoor pilot for Hope Ship, the same kind of MASH-style social commentary and potential comedy can be seen. Plus, Star Trek's signature ability to talk about ordinarily taboo topics by putting them in the distant future might have allowed Hope Ship to tackle topics that MASH couldn't. I just need to remind you folks of let that be your last battlefield to make my point. In terms of being anti-war, Star Trek already set up its own kind of Vietnam scenario with the Klingon Empire setting up proxy wars on less developed planets. The shows write themselves. If Hope Ship could have further explored these kinds of issues while still offering the same kind of Star Trek style action, adventure, and comedy, it still might have been able to overcome the obstacles which would have destined it for early cancellation. Not to mention the fact that it could have preempted MASH's anti-war message by one to three years since the movie and show debuted in 1970 and 72 respectively and Hope Ship would have gone into production in 1969. Hmm, I can see it now. Illogical. Thank you, Mr. Spock, for your interjection. So what do you think? Would you watch a Star Trek meets General Hospital kind of spinoff? How many seasons would you give it? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if there's any kind of Lost Trek out there you want me to study, let me know in the comments, and we'll plot a new course. Live long and prosper, I'm Alama Pono, and see you next time. Hey everybody, hope you enjoyed that video. With that in mind, if you have an idea for another journey through the space-time continuum, please let me know in the comments. The interesting thing about time is you can go in many different directions, forwards, backwards, and sideways in time. So, let me know in the comments what course you want us to plot, and we will go there. Either in the next video, or a couple videos from now. Either way, glad to have you aboard. So, live long and prosper. Emalama Pono, that's Hawaiian for be safe, be healthy, and see you next time.